Hello, I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE Media, co-host of theCUBE. We are here on the ground here in Santa Clara, California, at Centrify's headquarters with Tom Kemp, the CEO of Centrify, and Param Eftikari, who's the co-founder and senior fellow at ICIT, which is the Institute of Critical Infrastructure Technologies. Here to talk about security conversation. Guys, welcome to theCUBE's On the Ground. Thank you. Great to be here. Great to see you again, Tom. Yeah, and absolutely. Congratulations on all your success. And uh, Param, you, GovCloud is hot. We were just in DC uh, with Amazon Web Services Public Sector Summit, and it's gotten more and more to the point where cyber is on the front conversation and the political conversation. But on the commercial side as well, there's incidents happening every day. Just, just this past month, HBO, Game of Thrones has been yep. hijacked and ransomed. <laughs> I guess that's ransomware technically and a hack. Uh, that's high profile, but case after case of high profile incidents yep. Yep. Okay, on the commercial side. Public sector side, nobody knows what's happening. Why is security um, evolving slow right now? Why isn't it going faster? Can you guys talk about the state of the security market? Yeah, well, you know, I think first of all, you have to look at the landscape. I mean, our public and private sector organizations are being pummeled every day by nation states, mercenaries, cyber criminals, script kiddies, cyber jihadists, and they're exploiting vulnerabilities that are inherent in our antiquated legacy systems that are put together by, you know, uh, with the Frankenstein, you know, network, uh, as well as devices and systems and apps that are built without security by design. And we're seeing the results, as you said, right? We're seeing uh, an inundation of breaches on a daily basis and, and many more that we don't hear about. We're seeing weaponized uh, data, excuse me, being weaponized and used against us to make us question the integrity of our democratic process. Uh, and, uh, and, and we're seeing now a rise and focus on what could be the outcome of a cyber kinetic incident, which ultimately in the worst case scenario could have a loss of life. And so I think um, you know, as we talk about cyber and what it is we're trying to accomplish as a community, uh, we also ultimately have a responsibility to elevate the conversation and make sure that it's not an option, but it is a priority. Tom? Yeah, no, look, I mean, here we are in a situation in which the industry is spending close to $80 billion a year, and it's growing 10%, but the number of attacks are increasing much more than 10%. And uh, as Parham said, you know, we literally had an election impacted by cybersecurity. It's on the front page with HBO, et cetera. And I really think that we're now in a situation where we really need to rethink uh, how we do security uh, in, in as uh, enterprises and as even individuals. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to talk about just HBO, talk about the government, you mentioned that just the, the chaos that's going on here in America. You almost don't know what you don't know and with the, with the whole news cycle going on around this. But this, let's get back to this notion of critical infrastructure. I love that name that you have in your title, ICIT, Institute of Critical Infrastructure, because you know, and the, and certainly the government has had critical infrastructure. There's been bridges and roads and whatnot. They've had the DNS servers. There's been some critical infrastructure, the airports and whatnot. But for corporations, the critical infrastructure used to be the front door yeah. uh, and then their data yeah. center. Now with cloud, no perimeter. We've talked about this on the Cube before. You start to change the notion of what critical infrastructure is. So I guess, Baron, what does <laughs> critical infrastructure mean from a public and commercial perspective? Tom, you can talk about it. And what's the priorities for businesses and governments to figure out What's the order of operations to get to the bottom of making sure everything's secure? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, that's a great question. You know, when most people think about critical infrastructure as legacy technology, or legacy, you know, it's roads, it's bridges, it's dams. But if you look at the Department of Homeland Security, they have 16 sectors that they are tasked with protecting. It includes healthcare, finance, energy, communications, right? So as we see um, technology start to become more and more ingrained in all these different sectors, and we're not just talking about data, we're talking about ICS SCADA systems. A, a, a digital attack against any one of these critical infrastructure sectors can have different types of outcomes, whether you're talking about a, a commercial sector organization or the government. You know, one of the things that we always talk about is, is really the importance of elevating the, the conversations I mentioned earlier and, and putting security before profits. I think ultimately we've gotten to the situation because a lot of companies do a cost benefit analysis and say, you know what, uh, maybe in the healthcare sector and ultimately it'll be cheaper for me to be breached, pay my fines, deal with uh, potentially even the, um, the loss to, to brand, you know, to my, to my brand in terms of brand value and that, that'll be cheaper than investing what I need to to protect my patients and their information and that's the wrong way to look at it. I think now as we were talking about this week, the cost of all this is going higher, which is going to help, but I think we need to start seeing a fundamental mind shift in how we are prioritizing 
security, as I mentioned earlier, it's not an option. It must be a requisite. Yeah, I think what we're seeing now is in the years past, the hackers would get at some bits of information, but now we're seeing with HBO, with Sony, they can strip mine an yeah. entire company, yeah. right? They put them out of business. I mean, the, exactly. yeah, I mean, the money that they're doing with ransomware, which is a little bit higher profile ransomware, I mean, there's a specific business outcome here, and it's not looking good. They go out of business. Oh, absolutely. And so, uh, Centrify, we just recently sponsored a survey, and nowadays, if you announce that you got breached, and you have to announce, because you have to tell your shareholders, you have to tell your customers, your stock drops, on average, 5% in a day. And so, we're talking about yeah. billions of dollars of market capitalization that can disappear with a breach as well. So we're beyond, it's like, oh, they stole some data, we'll send out a, yeah. we'll send out a letter to our customers and we'll give them free Experian for a year or something like that. Now it's like all your IP, all the content. And, and John, I think you raised a very good point as well. In the case of the federal government, it's still about the infrastructure being physical mm -hmm. items. And of course, with Internet of Things, it's now connected to the Internet. So yeah. it's really scary that a bridge can flip open by some guy in the Ukraine or Russia, you know, fiddling it with it. But now with enterprises, uh, it's less and less physical to store. And we're now going through this massive shift to the cloud. And more and more of your IP is controlled and run. It's the complete deperimeterization well, that makes things even more complicated. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the industrial aspect of it with the bridge, because this is actually a real issue with self-driving cars. It's just something that runs my mind. We are just covering uh, some content, uh, covering Ford's event yesterday in San Francisco. Again, it's a huge problem, yeah. hacking of the cars. So industrial, industrial IoT opens up, again, the surface area. But this kind of brings the question down to customers that you guys have, or companies or governments. How do they become resilient? How, are they, how do they put steps in place? Because, you know, just talking to someone who runs a major port in the U.S., and the issues there are maritime, right? So yeah. when you talk about yeah. critical infrastructure, container ships, obviously you worry about terrorists and other things, bad things happening, but just the general IT infrastructure is Neanderthal. It's like 30 years old. Yeah. So you have legacy infrastructure, as you mentioned, but businesses also have legacy. So how do you balance where you are? How do you know the progress bar of, of your protection? How do you know uh, the things you need to put in place, how do you get to resilience? Yeah, I, but see, I think there also needs to be a rethink of security because the traditional ways that people did it was protecting the perimeter, having antivirus, firewalls, et cetera. But things have really changed. And so now what we're seeing is that identity has become the, the top attack vector going in. And so if you look at all these hacks and breaches, it's yeah. the stealing of usernames and passwords. So people are doing a good job of, so the hackers are social engineering the actual users. And so kind of a focus needs a shift of securing the old perimeter to focusing on securing the user. Is it really John Furrier trying to access email? Can we leverage biometrics in this? And trying to move to the concept of a zero trust model and where you have to, can't trust the network, can't trust the IP address, but you need to factor in a lot of different uh, aspects. I just, just following a story about blockchain because we've been covering a lot of the blockchain, immutable, everything's encrypted, the wallets, which are. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. hey, why do, <laughs> let's just go out to the wallet where they store the money. <laughs> it's encrypted, now we own that encrypted data. So exactly. again, this is, this is the, the hackers are fast. So again, back to companies because they have to put, they have shareholder issues or yep. they have some corporate governance issues. But at the end of the day, it's a moving train. How does the government offer support? How do companies put it in place? What do they need to do? Yeah, well, uh, from there's a couple of things you can look at. First of all, you know, as as a think tank, we are active on Capitol Hill, working with um, members of both minority and majority sides who are actively proposing bipartisan legislation, which provides meaningful uh, movement forward to secure uh, and, and address some of the issues you're talking about. Senator Marquis uh, recently uh, put out the um, Cyber Shield Act, which creates a a type of um, uh, uh, score, right, for a device kind of like the Energy Star in the, in the, in the energy sector. So just this week, uh, ICIT put out a, a paper in support of an amendment by uh, um, Senator Lindsey Graham, which actually addresses the inherent vulnerabilities in our election systems, right? So there's a lot of good work being done, and that really goes to the core of what we do and the reasons that we're partnering together. ICIT is, is in the business of educating and advising. We put out research, we make it freely available, we don't believe in commoditizing information, we believe in liberating it. So we get it in the hands of as many people as possible, and then we get uh, this objective research 
uh, uh, and use it as a stepping stone to educate and to advise. And it could be through uh, meetings, it could be through um, events, it could be through um, conversations with the media. But I think this educational process is really critical to uh, start to change the minds of someone's talking if about. If I can add to that, I think what really needs to be done with security is better information sharing. And it's, it's with other governments and enterprises that are under attack sharing that information as opposed to only having it for themselves and their advantage. And then also uh, what's required is better knowledge of what are the best practices uh, th that, that need to be done to better s protect both government and enterprises. Well, because I want to shift gears and talk about Cyber Connect event, which is coming up in November, uh, an industry event. Um, you guys are sponsoring at Centrify, but you guys are also involved as running the content program. It's an independent event. It's targeted at the industry, not as a mm -hmm. Centrify user group. Um, but Paramount, I want to put you on the spot before we get to the, cent um, the Cyber Connect event. Yeah. You mentioned the elections. What's the general, I'm Silicon Valley, so I've got to ask the question because you're in the trenches down in D.C. What is the general sentiment in D.C. right now on the hacking? Because I was explaining to my son the other day, I'm like, yeah, the Russians probably hacked everybody, so technically the election fell into that market basket of hacks. So, you know, maybe they did hack the election. So, so it's a, it's a, it's, I'm just hand-waving that, but it probably makes sense. The question is, how real is the hacking threat? in the minds of the folks in D.C. around Russia and potentially China in these areas? Yeah, I think the, the threat is absolutely real, but I think there has to be a difference between uh, media on both sides politicizing the conversation. Um, there's a difference between somebody going in and actually uh, you know, changing your vote from one side to the other. There's also the conversation about the weaponization of data and um, what we do know that Russia is doing with, with regards to uh, having armies of trolls out there who are, who are with fake profiles and are creating faux conversations and steering public sentiment and perception in directions that maybe wasn't already there. And so I think part of the hysteria that we see, I think we're fearful and we have a right to be fearful, but I think taking the emotion and the politics out of it and actually doing forensic assessments from an objective perspective to understand what truly is going on. We are having our information stolen. There is a risk that um, a nation state could execute a very um, high impact digital attack that has a loss of life. Um, we do know that foreign states uh, are trying to impact the outcomes of our uh, democratic processes. I think it's important to understand though, how are they doing it and is what we're reading about truly what's happening kind of uh, uh, um, on the streets. And that's where the industrial thing you were kind of tying together, that's the loss of life potential, using digital as an attack vector into something that could have a physical and ultimately dead, physical outcome. deadly outcome. Um, yeah, we covered also that um, um, story that uh, was put out about the fake news infrastructure. It's not just the content that they're making up. It's actually the infrastructure yep. of fake news, botnets yeah. uh, and whatnot. And I think um, um, Micro uh, wrote a story on us where they actually detailed you can, you can smear journalists for 40K. Yeah. There's agencies <laughs> oh, yeah. out there that are built for specifically these counter- uh, Yeah, it's, it's, as, a, it's as a service. You know, go on a forum uh, on the deep web and you can contract these types of things out. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's absolutely out there. And then what do you say to your average American friends that you say, hey, having a cocktail with you at dinner? Hey, what's going on with security? What do you say to them? You should be worried, calm down, don't we're on it. What, what's the message that you share with your friends that aren't in the, in the industry? Um, personally, I think the message is, you know, you need to be vigilant. You need to, it may be annoying, but you do have to practice good cyber hygiene. Yeah. Think about your passwords. Think about what you're sharing on social media. I, we also talk, and I personally believe that some of these things will not change unless we as consumers change what is acceptable to us. If we stop buying devices or, 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 or systems or apps based on the convenience that it brings to our lives, and we say, I'm not going to spend money on that car because I don't know if it's secure enough for me, you will see industry change very quickly. Um, so so I consumer behavior is critical. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's definitely a piece of it. Yeah. All right, guys. So exciting event coming up. The Cube will be covering the Cyber Connect event in November. The dates, I think, November... Um, 6th and 7th. 6th and 7th in New York City, the Grand Hyatt. Talk about the, the curriculum, because this is a unique event um, where you guys are bringing um, your sponsorship to the table, but providing an, an open industry event. Mm -hmm. What's the curriculum? What's the agenda? What's the purpose of the event? Yeah, Tom? Okay, okay I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, I mean... Historically, like other security vendors, we've had our users conference, right? And what we found is that, as you alluded to, that there just needs to be better education uh, of what's going on. And so instead of just limiting it to us talking to our customers about us, we really need to broaden the conversation. And so that's why we brought in ICIT to really help us 
broaden the conversation, raise more awareness and visibility for what needs to be done. So this is a pretty unique conference mm -hmm. in that we're having a lot of CISOs from some incredible enterprise, as well as government. Uh, General Alexander, the form of the Cybersecurity Command is a, is a keynote, but we have the CISO of Aetna Blue Cross involved as well. So we wanna raise awareness in terms of what are the best practices, what are the leading minds thinking about security. And in parallel also, for our customers, we're gonna have a parallel track where if they wanna get more product focused uh, technology. So this is not a Centrify event. This is an industry event. You know, Black Hat is great, RSA is great, but it's really more at the, the kind of the bits and bytes. They're very it's, narrow, but, the, the, here's the, but you are only an identity player. Yeah. This is a bigger issue. What about these other issues? Will you discuss Oh, absolutely. Range? Go ahead, please. Yeah, well, well, is it just identity or is it more? Oh, it absolutely is more. And this is one of the reasons, um, just at a macro level, uh, the work that we've done with Centrify for a number of years now, um, you know, we have share the same philosophy that we have a responsibility as experts in the cyberspace to move the industry forward and to really usher in almost a cybersecurity renaissance, if you will. And so this is really the vision behind CyberConnect. So if you look at the curriculum, we're talking about um, corporate espionage um, and how it's impacting commercial organizations. We're talking about the role of machine learning based artificial intelligence. We'll be talking about the importance of encrypting your data, about mm -hmm. security by design, about what's going on uh, with, with the botnet epidemic that's out there. So there absolutely will be a very balanced program and it is again driven and grounded in that research that ICIT is putting out and the relationships that we have with some of these uh, key players. So the Institute of Critical Infrastructure Technology, the, the think tank that you're the co-founder of, has those broad, you're bringing that broad agenda to CyberConnect, correct? That's correct, absolutely. So this is awesome, congratulations. So I got to ask on the thought leadership side, um, you guys have been working together. Can you just talk about your relationship between Centrify and ICIT? Obviously you're independent, um, you guys are a vendor. Talk about this relationship and why it's so important for this event. Well, absolutely, I mean, look, um, as a security vendor, you know, a lot of, uh, a big percentage of security vendors sell into the, the US federal government. Um, and, and through those conversations, that uh, a lot of the CISOs at, at these governments were pointing us to these ICIT guys, right? And we got awareness and visibility through that. And it was like, they were just doing great stuff in terms of talking about, yes, Centrify is a leading identity provider, but people are looking for a complete solution and looking for a balanced way to look at it. And so we felt that it would be a great opportunity to partner with these guys. And so uh, we uh, sponsored an event that they did, Winter Summit, and then and they did such a great job. And the content was amazing, the people they had, that we said, you know what, let's make this more of a general thing. And let's just, let's, let, let's be in the background helping uh, facilitate this, but let, let the people you know, hear about this good information. So you figured out the community model. <laughs> you underwrite the content. No, because this is really what works. You got enable, you're yeah. enabling this conversation. And more than ever in the security space, I'd love to get your perspective on this, is that there's an ethos developing, has been developed, and it's expanding aggressively, kind of open source on one side, but security is all about data sharing. You mentioned the disclosure yeah, absolutely. from a hacking standpoint, that's more of a statutory filing, but here, the security space is highly communicative, they talk to each other and yeah. there's a trust relationship, so you're essentially bringing an independent event, you're funding it. Yeah, absolutely. It's not your event. This is That's an independent event. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and so, I mean, Tom said it very well, you know, as an institute, we rely on the cap financial capital that comes in from our partners like Centrify, and yeah. so we would be unable to uh, deliver at a large scale the value that we do to the legislative community, to federal agencies and the commercial sector, and, and, and the institute's research is uh, being shared on NATO libraries and embassies around the world. So I mean, this is a, this is really a global operation that we have. And so when we talk about yeah. layered security, right, we're not into a silver bullet solution. A lot of you know full experts out there who say I have the answer. We know that there's a, a layered approach that needs to be done. Centrify, they have a technology that plays a part in that. But even more important than that for us is that they share that same philosophy, and, and we do see ourselves as being able to usher in the change that's required to move everything forward. And so it's been a, it's been a great, and we have a lot of a lot of plans for the next few years ahead too. Absolutely. You know, that's great work. You're bringing some great content to the table, and that's what people want, and, the, and they, they can see who's enabling it. So that's a great business model for, for everyone. Uh, I got to ask one question, though, about your business. I love the critical infrastructure focus, and I like your um, the value you guys are bringing. But you guys have this fellow program. Can you just talk about this fellow? Because you're part of the fellow Yeah, yeah absolutely. Fellow no. level. And I don't want to say accreditation; it's not really going to credit, but it's, it's a badge. It's a, it's a it's a bar. You guys yeah, have yeah, a fellow, no, that's, that's, no, that's explain a, the fellow program. That's a great that question. Uh, at, at the institute, the, we have a core group of experts who represent different technology niches, 
uh, they make up our fellow program. And so as I discussed earlier, when we're putting out research, when we're educating the media, when we're advising Congress, when we're doing the, the, the work of the Institute, we're constantly turning back to our fellow program members to provide some of that research and expertise and, 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 and sharing, you know, not just providing financial capital, but really pr pr bringing that thought leadership to the table. Centrify is a part of our, our fellows program, and so we've been working with them for a number of years. It's very uh, exclusive. Um, and there is a process. You have to be referred in by an existing fellow program member. We have a lot of requests, but it really comes down to um, do you understand what we're trying to accomplish? Uh, do you share our same mission, our same values, and can you be part of this uh, elite community that we've built? And so, um, you know, Centrify is a big part of that. And the cloud, obviously, is accelerating everything, the gov cloud action, certainly in your space, and we know what's going on in our world. Yeah, uh, absolutely. The world's moving a zillion miles an hour. It's like literally a moving train. So, congratulations, uh, Cyber Connect event in November, a great event, check it out. The Cube will be there, we'll have live coverage, we'll be broadcasting, we'll be documenting all the action and bring it to you on the Cube, obviously siliconangle.com uh, and lukebond.com. John Furrier here at Centrify's headquarters in California in Silicon Valley. Thanks for watching.